Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Schneider's Golf. It's a beautiful day here in West Point, Utah, and today we're going to be making a new style of golf club. So up to this point on the channel, we have traditionally made just putters, but today we are going to make a double iron. I was rummaging around through a bunch of the old golf clubs that we have, and I found these two irons, which are kind of similar. They're just no name, but they're both made out of a similar grade of stainless and so they can be welded together. And what I wanna do is I wanna combine both of the heads so that with one swing of the club, we could hit two golf balls with two different heads. So something kind of like this, but we're gonna make them a lot prettier and we're gonna make it look like it was on purpose. So we're gonna start off by chopping off one of these hosels. We're gonna use the mill, we're gonna cut it off. Then we're gonna weld these together. And then we may even try and hit a couple shots, even though here in Utah, we have a bunch of snow on the ground. We're gonna rip some out into the range, see how it goes, and then we'll have to do a challenge with this as soon as the snow melts. Let's begin working on getting these heads figured out. Our first order of business is going to be deciding how we wanna lay this out and how we wanna do it. Now, these irons are fairly similar in shape, but one of them is right-handed and one of them is left-handed. Sorry, Braito, I'm not making a left-handed compatible golf club right now. We're making a right-handed, dual-headed club for a right-handed person. So kind of what I'm thinking for the layout of this golf club is to have a standard right-handed club with a normal shaft angle, and then take the left-handed club and put it on here somewhere, weld it on. I'm trying to decide how high to do it. Probably leave a little bit of the hosel intact. I think that'd look kind of cool. I want it to be strong enough so that it's not gonna bend or anything like that. I'm thinking I'm gonna take the left-handed club. I'm going to chop the hosel on a line in here somewhere. We will uh, line the soles up so that they can be hit at the same time and we'll weld them together. We'll get the heat gun really quick. I'm going to heat this up and pull this shaft out and then we'll put this in the mill and we'll start doing our little contour here so that we can hook this on to this other hosel. That's hot. Well, this is really weird. I've never had a shaft that wouldn't come out with just normal heat gun. I'm gonna go and get my torch really quick and that should do the trick. All right, I'm back and I've got the torch and this should heat it up plenty fast. Holy cow! Talk about like the hardest shaft I've ever tried to get out. What a joke. I've never had a shaft be this stubborn with that much heat. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad I got that on camera. That was crazy. Honestly, I've never had a shaft be that difficult. If we had smoke detectors in here, they would be going off right now. The Sharpie didn't hold up to the heat of the torch. We're gonna have to redraw our line. I wanna make this so that it's just a little bit bowed. So what I'm trying to do is get both of these just kind of perfectly flat. I'd rather have it a little bit bowed this way than like too much toe on both sides. I kind of like it in tight. I kind of like it in close. I think it'll make it like a little more playable. Really the only line that matters is cutting it right here on this angle. All right, we've got our iron head here in the vise. We have it at the angle we need it. We're going to throw this quarter inch end mill into the Tormach and we're slowly going to ramp down through the hosel to get the angle that we need. Let's run this. that so we had a little bit uh we had a little bit of leftover metal there but on our iron she cut through pretty good 
can't complain about that. All right, well, the cut wasn't perfect. We had a little bit of uh, a curve here, but for the most part, that's pretty good. I'm gonna take this over to the belt sander, clean it up just a tiny bit, and then we will weld this on to the other hosel of the other iron. Can we just appreciate the antiquity and the craftsmanship of this tour model? The Perfecta 2. I mean, look at this guy. They just don't make cavity backs like they used to. If you could even call this cavity back. Look, by Golf Master. What a brand. And on this side, we have the Adept. I actually remember these clubs. I think my dad had me playing these like for one of my first sets. Can't remember. These were like a thing though. These were like a budget club in like a kit set. But uh, yeah, pretty sweet. The Adept. Pretty cool. That's what we're working with. We have this cut now. And I think it's gonna fit on here very nicely. I like the angle here. I'm just gonna set it right there. And uh, we're gonna throw a bead on that thing. And then we are gonna game it. Let's fire up the TIG welder. Forgot my ceramic cup is trashed. Hope we can still weld with it. How's my hair? All right, here's what we have. I need to dry it off just a little bit. It's pretty nifty. The welds aren't as good as I would have hoped for, but I blew through the hosel right here. And as soon as a weld hits epoxy, for some reason, it just like explodes. It's crazy. Um, and I've had it happen before. So here's our club. I think it's ready to be gained. It's got some uh, super old Lambkin SureTac grip on it. Obviously, we're gonna leave that on here because it's super OG. I'm gonna run and grab some golf balls. I have a little hitting mat right here on the short course. We're just gonna try and rip a couple shots to see how it works. So I had a bucket of range balls in the shop. It's time to test this bad boy out. Let me show you the welds really quick. It's nothing pretty, but I think it'll get the job done. So here's our welds. Kind of rough shape, but uh, I think it's gonna gain. I don't know. This could get dicey. It's really heavy. For a shot, like how am I, how do I do this? Do I pull two balls out of the basket? Is one club head gonna get to the ball faster than another club head? It makes sense that the outside one probably has more twist in it. This is just weird. I don't know how this is gonna go. <laughs> this tour model has the weirdest sound to it. So the close one did okay. The far one sucked. I'm going to try and hit just a single ball with the normal iron face. No matter what I do, I cannot hit a straight shot with this. I thought it would somewhat work. This is completely impractical. It doesn't work at all. I'm super bummed. I thought it would actually work. That was the best one I've hit. The best one I've hit. Well, we have ourselves a fun little gimmick. This might be fun to have some challenges with. I don't think anybody's going to be hitting this one very good, but 
it was fun to make. All right, last try. Nice and slow and smooth, here we go. That actually wasn't that bad. That wasn't that bad. That's tough. That is tough. Well, I don't know how practical it is. We will definitely have to have some challenges with this because it's kind of fun. It'd be fun to do a two-man scramble and somebody has to hit this off the tee or something. That is the two, what do I call it? A two-headed iron? The two-headed dragon? I don't know. Hope you enjoyed the build today. Kind of random, kind of uh, silly. Not very useful in real life, but thanks for being here. Get out and play some golf if you can, and I'll see you next time. Take care.